You might have just seen that we launched a brilliant new range of lures into the Fox Rage collection. These are the Fox Rage Mega Craw, available in three sizes, multiple colours. Um, they're already catching loads of fish across Europe for all of our anglers, and they're due to hit the shops in the UK very, very soon. What we thought we'd do today is show you exactly how to rig these up. There's multiple op options for, for rigging these bad boys up. Show you what works and show you what's going to catch your fish and get them safely to the bank. Check it out. So to start off with, we're going to look at the corkscrew and stinger approach. Now what this does is allows you to put a weight at the end of the law and then fix a stinger with the treble hook somewhere along the body. So when the fish hits, I normally broadside these things, it's going to uh, hook up perfectly. For the bigger laws, uh, the bigger size of the mega craw, I would go for the super screw that's got the extra long cork screw and the location pin in the middle so that you get lots of meat of the lure and it stays in place. The other alternative is our uh, smaller cork screw round and bullet shaped uh, cork screw heads which uh, aren't quite as long but for the smaller lures, you, smaller size lures you don't need those. So look I'll demonstrate how this works. So you take the end of your lure get the center of the back end and just screw in your corkscrew and that takes up plenty of flesh it's going to take a lot it takes a lot to get it in so it's going to take a lot to get it out that won't ever come out while you're fishing and there you are you've got a weight on the end for casting remember there's a lot of innate weight in these bigger lures anyway just because the amount of plastic used so there's your weight and from there you can put your stinger on. There's a couple of ways of locating your stinger at the end. Pop that into the flesh of the, of the lure. And you can fish that quite easily. Use a smaller, a uh, shorter or longer stinger, depending on where you want to locate it. If you want to locate it right on the head, or get a shorter stinger located halfway down the body. Or with our TI harnesses, you've got a double stinger. So these are designed for our uh, pro shads and re-rigging our uh, shallow reps but you can take one of these out of the packet and quite easily use it on one of these so you screw that in at the end and then you've got a hook right at the head end and a hook in the middle so if a fish hits you know there's a high probability that's going to get hooked up and hooked up well on the smaller size of lure we've got a bullet head there corkscrew head and a smaller stinger and it's the same principle, just in uh, in a smaller format. One of the things you can do, one of the things you can do to make that a little bit more secure on the jig head, is attach a split ring to one of the to one of the loops in the in the head, or you can attach the stinger to your clip when you clip on uh, to your line. So if you've got your wire trace with the clip at the end, you clip in. Your, um, your stinger to that point as well. So you've got a direct line straight to the fish when, you, when you're playing it. What a corkscrew head also does, if you notice, you know, it's a great example on this, is it gives it that more flexibility. With a jig head going through, you've got a metal spine, goes all the way through out here, and that body length is then rigid. With these, because you're only going down to, what's that, a third of the body, You've got loads of action in there and when a fish hits as well that's quite important because if a big fish hits that that's going to collapse up quite easily and again all that's going to go into the fish's mouth if it's a big pike and then you've got hooks on show and you've got a good chance of hooking up with a jig head you've got a good chance of hooking up but that's not going to collapse all the way down like it would do on a, on a corkscrew presentation so the next way and probably the most popular way to uh, rig these very versatile lures is with a jig head now with these sizes, especially the two bigger sizes, I'd go with the Fox Rage Jig XS hooks. If you're fishing with these, you're fishing for big, big pike essentially, or big Xander, but mainly over in the UK it's going to be big pike for these. And these hooks are perfect, they've got a huge eye on them for your big clips off your trace. They're very, very strong, XS is for extra strong hooks. And they've also got a very specific head shape with this mushroom design, so they will fit flush up to the butt end of these lures. As when you're rigging 
any lure off on a on a, uh, a jig head, it's the same same principle. Measure your measure your uh, jig head against the lure. Work out how it's going to sit, and work out where the bottom bend of that hook is going to come out. Either remember it in your head, or just mark it with a tip, the point of the hook, so you've got a, a visual marker. And then you want to thread the hook down. So start right in the middle. On these lures, because they're designed for multiple ways of rigging, you've got slots top and bottom on the lure. So even though you look like you've got a lot of meat on this, this tail end from this side, you've got to remember it's reduced in the middle. So you need to keep that hook point right down the center of the lure when you're threading it on. Keep it going down. That meat should then bend round the hook and then pop it out where you've made your marker, where you remember that the hook's supposed to come out. Push it all the way in, and now you've got it a perfectly flush finish. The hook's coming out. There's plenty of gap there for the fish, uh, to when they take it, for the fish to be able to get hooked up well and have a good hook hold. And there you are, swim that. It's, it's the easiest way of rigging them, really. It takes seconds to do, and it's swimming really well. Really nice presentation. So just while we're on the subject of the jig heads, and obviously we've looked at um, using the corkscrew and stingers, you can actually do a combination of the two as well. So this is the biggest size Mega Craw, and I've used this excess jig head halfway down the body. But like with when you're Xander fishing, for example, and uh, you want to make sure that all parts of the lure are covered in terms of hookups, you put the jig head in and then you can use a stinger. So for this one, with the size of the, the um, eyes on these hooks, I would definitely use some kind of uh, split ring or if you can get a split ring through there and on there, or I would put it onto the clip for your wire trace, but clip it up to that end and then pop it in the head. So you've got a big old treble hook there along with the jig head. So the, the two rigging options we've already looked at, the corkscrew with a stinger and the jig head options are great for open water, but if you're fishing water that's slightly snaggier or with weed, they're not going to be so good. They're going to catch uh, up on weed, uh, they're going to ruin your presentation and you're going to have lots of problems. If you're fishing snaggy waters with lots of weed, what you want to be looking at, as usual, is an offset hook for a weedless presentation. Now using an offset hook on these lures, I mean this, this applies to all sizes, you just need a bigger offset uh, hook on the largest size uh, and smaller for the smaller ones. Um, what it does is hides the hook point away, puts it into the into the body cavity on these slots and means that you can slide the lure past the weed without catching up. This is another way that these lures are designed. Like I said before, they've got slots top and they've got slots on the bottom as well of these lures. So you can fish these very confidently in weed with offset hooks. So I'll just show you how to put an offset hook on. The main point to look at is the bend up here. You want that to be sitting inside the lower body. So you just slide it through the back end to the bottom, push it round, twist it, and then where that sits along the body, you need to be pushing the point through. Knock your finger out. And there you have the point to clip up on at the end, you've got your offset hook, but the point is hidden inside that cavity there, that slot, so that when the fish hits, it pops out and you can catch hook up on the fish's mouth and you're into a fish. But like I say, as it is like that presented, that's just going to slide on by, nothing's going to catch weed wise. So you've got your offset hook on there, but you'll want some weight to present these lures properly and this gives you options the first option and uh, a great option is to use a cheb weight now what a cheb weight is is essentially like uh, the end of a jig head the weight at the end of a jig head but it's articulated and can be changed uh, on the end of these offset hooks so all you do is pull the pin out attach that put it back on and your line goes the other side and that allows for lots of articulation you can change your weights quite often depending on depth, speeds, how fast you want it to drop and all that kind of stuff. It's a great presentation, but it is captive. So that stays on the end of the hook. Uh, it doesn't slide up the line. Uh, that's what you see there is what you get, but it is a great presentation. 
to increase your chances of this hook popping out and catching a fish, one of the best tips someone showed me is literally just, and it's quite horrible, is to just get some spit on that bend of the hook as it goes into the body and that just lubricates and you can feel it straight away. It, it will pop out a little bit easier. You know, and those little uh, edges, that's what it's all about, add all those little edges up and uh, it can result in more fish on the bank. So try that. Try not to get hooked up on your mouth when you put the spit on it. It is a bit disgusting, but it definitely works. Try it for yourself. Okay, so the other presentation you can do on these lures, bearing in mind that they are really designed for pike over in the UK, is the Texas rig. Now, obviously normally the Texas rig you'd be using fluoro, but we do not advise you to use fluoro when pike fishing at all. Very dangerous for the fish, they can bite through it. Um, you know, if you catch a pike, on fluoro when you're fishing for something else that that happens but if you're specifically targeting pike on a law like this do not use fluorocarbon so what do we use we've got wire you can buy lots of uh, tieable wire or use our our own uh, uh, fox rage predator wire tie your own uh, leaders up with that onto a clip clip it on and what a, a texas rig does is it has a cone weight at that end to provide the weight but the main thing is with it when you cast out that weight pushes down so it's on the lure fires it out drops it down in the water especially with these mega claws they're brilliant when they fall through the water those claws go absolutely mental that's a big attraction when they're falling through the water hit the bottom jig it back but when they are falling through what will happen is that the weight will fall away from the lure so you get an extra flutter when that weight is acting on the on the mega crawl, as they're both falling through the water, you get the flutter. But then, when the weight touches down first, because it's moved away along this uh, wire trace, that lure will just slow down, flutter down a little bit more, a little bit longer hang time, that's what that will give you. And it's as simple as that, just tie your wire trace onto there, use a clip so you can change your lure on your hook, uh, have a, a, a weight that moves up and down that, that wire trace, and then you've got a a pike friendly Texas rig. It, maybe it's a bit of a faff, but it's still a great presentation to try. And it's actually not any more of a faff with tieable wire or even a crimp wire from our own range of, of wires than using fluorocarbon. And it is a great way of presenting these laws that many pike will, will absolutely batter. Because like I say, that slow fall through the water that the Texas gives. And also, when that lure is on the bottom, and a pike takes it off the bottom, they pull away and they don't feel the weight like they would do of a, a corkscrew or a jig head because that cone weight stays static on the bottom. So they're just pulling up the lure and not this weight. So again, in terms of feel, when a pike takes, it's a lot, a lot better for the pike. It might make them hold on a little bit longer and up your chances of, of hooking into them properly and getting them to the bank. So there we go, another presentation with the offset hook is the Texas rig, but using wire. Remember that.